Welcome to my YouTube series where I'm attempting to understand all of the different cognitive biases and communicate that information to you, my lovely audience. If you don't know what a cognitive bias is, then here's a quick introduction. Our minds are always looking for answers. They're looking for tiny connections between everything that we do to help us understand our world and our experiences. But sometimes our mind takes shortcuts to these answers based on information it thinks it already knows. These shortcuts can help our minds to generate results that aren't necessarily true. And different types of cognitive shortcuts result in different types of cognitive bias, to which researchers and other smart people have identified many. Today we're going to look at the bandwagon effect. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more from the Daily Mind Trap. The bandwagon effect has been observed in many different fields like political science, medicine, economics, sociology and psychology. There's been many attempts to explain this concept, so it shares a lot of commonalities with other theories such as the spiral of silence and impersonal influence. It also crosses over with other cognitive biases like groupthink and false consensus. Broadly, this term is used to describe a phenomenon where people will adopt a belief or idea when they see that other people have. So if something is popular, other people are more likely to support it. And the more people who support it, the more popular it will be. This behavior of the bandwagon effect is self-reinforcing, meaning that it creates a positive feedback loop that strengthens and grows something's popularity over time. There is a limit to popularity though. According to this study that looked at the popularity of certain baby names, the quicker something skyrockets to popularity, the quicker it dies too. We can see this in how fashion trends are widely adopted for one season before becoming almost offensively unpopular a few weeks or months later. The phrase jump on the bandwagon was used in the mid 1800s to describe the literal wagon that a band of musicians would use when they were touring with the circus. Okay, I know there's a joke here about people who jump on the bandwagon being a bunch of clowns, but I later the term was associated with politics when presidential candidate Zachary Taylor capitalized on audiences attention when he merged his campaign tour with this clown. After that, jumping on the bandwagon was a term used to mock and criticize people who get lost in the hype. Today, the bandwagon effect is still tied to politics. Researchers want to know what makes a political candidate or party popular in the eyes of the public and therefore vote worthy. So how does the bandwagon effect work? Well, you might hear of something called information cascades, which is basically a schmancy science way of saying, if other people are doing it, then we are more likely to disregard our own beliefs and critically think about it before going along with what everybody else believes in. Earth possessed you to get an earring. Millhouse has one. If Millhouse jumped off a cliff? Millhouse jumped off a cliff? I'm there. So it looks like this. Receive information from others, agree with them without acknowledging your own opinions or other important information. But without this input from others, aka jumping off the bandwagon, you might instead be confronted with a decision or a dilemma, research, weigh the pros and cons, and make a decision that is right for you. So why do we jump on the bandwagon? A few reasons. One, FOMO. People have a fear of missing out on what everybody else is getting in on. We also want to fit in to our communities and our cultures. We like being on the winning side. From a biological perspective, there's strength in numbers. And we also jump on the bandwagon effect because of what I mentioned earlier about cognitive bias, these shortcuts to answers. It's the rationality that if it's good enough for other people, then I don't need to make the decision about it because it's widely adopted and accepted by others. So I can trust in the decisions that other people have made. So why is it bad? Why is it bad to trust other people? Well, just because other people do it and it's widely accepted doesn't mean that it's going to be right for you. Also, sometimes people are wrong. 
sometimes it's a con. The bandwagon effect also stops you from questioning the things in your life and allows others to make decisions for you. This could lead you to feel powerless over the things that happened to you. And it could result in behaviors that you didn't really ask for in the beginning, but now they've become a part of how you see yourself. So how do we avoid the bandwagon effect? Well, it could help to slow down and make decisions in your own timing. When you have to make a choice to do something, have a think about whether you really need or want to do that thing. Try to make decisions without the influence of other people's opinions. And if somebody is pressuring you to make a decision right now, they're probably trying to influence you and you have a right to ignore them. Be a rebel. Look at all the options. Weigh the pros and cons and use your critical thinking skills. It might also be good to avoid the reverse bandwagon effect as well. It's another cognitive bias where people will avoid doing something because other people are doing it. So whichever way you swing towards, just know that you don't need other people to dictate or validate your decisions. Okay, that's all from the Daily Mind Trap for today. Keep an eye on the channel for some more explanations of the different forms of cognitive bias. Thank you so much if you watch this video and I'll see you next time.